Muslim marriages, which is known as a nikah, is not legally recognized in South Africa if it is not performed by a marriage officer and legally registered. South Africa is well known for its inclusivity, but why is this not the case for Muslim marriages? To help us unpack this issue, we are joined in studio by uh, Professor uh, Wahid Amin, Director of Internalization and Outreach in the Faculty of Law at the UCT. Um, Professor Wokamin, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Busi. Very good to be here. Now, when it comes to the issue of uh, 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 Muslim marriages, I know there's been a talk um, for quite some time. I know that um, African customary marriages are recognized as um, legal, but it's not the case with the Muslim marriages. Why is that? Well, with African customary marriages, um, after the 1994 uh, democratic elections, um, we adopted a constitution mm -hmm. that um, essentially recognized uh, cu African customary law, customary law, as being legal, whereas prior to 1994 under apartheid um, and also under colonialism, customary law was not recognized. Mm -hmm. So the constitution made provision for the recognition of customary law um, and it also made provision for government to be able to enact legislation to recognize African customary marriages. Uh, or personal law systems. And so in about 1998, um, legislation was passed. It was called the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act. Mm -hmm. And um, that act then afforded recognition to customary marriages. Now, um, it was probably done at that time, as, you know, as soon as possible, because the majority of people in South Africa are black, yes. um, are black African. And many not, uh, enter not only civil marriages or Christian marriages, they also conclude customary marriages. Mm -hmm. And so um, the government felt that it was important that those marriages be afforded recognition as well. Mm -hmm. um, there was an indication prior to 1994 that consideration would be given to the recognition of um, religious marriages as well, in particular Muslim marriages. Yes. And so in about uh, 1999, a, well, in fact, uh, as, as early as 1994 already, a process had started mm. um, where there were talks about recognition for Muslim marriages and how that would happen. Yes. Um, we even got to the point where draft legislation was submitted to the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Development in 2003. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, in fact, um, that legislation had been amended by the Department of Justice and submitted and was basically approved by cabinet. And that essentially means, so that legislation was the Muslim Marriages Bill. Yes. And that legislation could have entered parliament. Now, of course, a number of years has passed by. We're sitting with draft legislation and nothing has actually happened. Um, and so, of course, the question is a very valid one. Why not? Mm -hmm. um, it's been so many years. It has been so many years. Now, various reasons have been advanced for this. Um, the one main reason that government contends it uh, does not, it can't move forward with the bill is that it, it feels that there's n there isn't sufficient consensus within the Muslim community um, in respect of the bill, and also, um, you know, the the there seems to be an indication that. The, uh, because the bill is not consistent with gender equality, they mm -hmm. can't move forward with it. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is that in the meantime, um, Muslim marriages and other religious marriages, like Hindu marriages, yes. like Jewish marriages, are not afforded recognition. And the parties in the marriage are the ones who suffer. And usually it's women course, who end up suffering. Mm -hmm. Now in 2009, there was some indication that um, Parliament is looking into is um, like there was some positive signs that um, the bill was going to be signed. Um, how important would you say it is um, for these religious uh, marriages to be uh, made legal in the country? I think it's extremely important because we've seen that while the, re while the religious marriages are not recognized, um, there are benefits and under civil law, for example, mm -hmm. that parties are not able to access very easily. And there are also rights that are available to them under their religious personal law systems that they wouldn't be able to enforce because the, the marriage is not recognized. So I'll give you an example. Mm. Um, 
under you know under under Islamic law, the way in which it is practiced within uh, the Muslim communities in South Africa, it's very difficult for a, for a woman to obtain a Muslim divorce. In certain Hindu communities, the same situa situation prevails, and in Jewish communities, a similar situation prevails, mm. where it's difficult for and so you see across these religious communities, it's difficult for women to obtain religious divorce. Um, which essentially means that if they are, if they find themselves in marriages that are abusive, or they are in unwanted marriages, mm -hmm. it's difficult for them to exit the marriages. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the men are able to more easily exit marriages. Mm -hmm. If the marriages were recognised, then w then we could um, introduce some form of regulation um, in which it would be a with, in which women would be able to access. Um, the forms of religious divorce that would be available. I see. Now, um, you've been working on, on this issue for quite some time, uh, um, working with different stakeholders. When it comes to um, the enacting of the legislation, I believe there are certain people who feel that um, it takes away the purity of um, Islam if it is um, recognized in terms of legally. How do you engage such people? You see, I don't agree with that view. I've studied the bill um, and I have considered it in the context of Islamic law. Yeah. And I, in fact, think that the bill does the absolute opposite. In fact, the bill um, introduces, or not introduce, but recognizes rights and responsibilities for husbands and wives in Muslim marriages and children born of those marriages mm -hmm. within the framework of Islamic law, of a very traditional understanding of Islamic law, actually. Mm. Um, so I, I don't think that there are any grounds to be able to suggest that the Muslim Marriages Bill in any way um, infringes or, or acts against the tenets of Islamic law. Mm. And what is the current um, situation regarding this issue? Is it in the courts? Are you challenging it? Or it has just taken a bad seat for now? The Women's Legal Center, which is the NGO based in Cape Town, um, uh, they take up uh, women's issues in, in a legal context, mm -hmm. mainly. They have instituted an application against uh, government. Okay. Um, and essentially, they will be asking the Western Cape High Court to grant an order that will compel government to recognize Muslim marriages um, in whichever way it, um, it decides it should be recognized, mm -hmm. either by changing the common law definition of marriage yes. Currently, the common law definition of marriage um, would exclude potentially polygynous marriages, like Muslim marriages. Mm -hmm. um, or um, it might uh, tell government to enact legislation. And so that could be the enactment of the Muslim Marriages Bill, or perhaps another bill that government needs to introduce, mm -hmm. or to try and find a way to fit Muslim marriages into existing legislation, like the Marriage Act, yes. or the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act. Now, currently, for someone who is in this kind of marriage, how do they protect themselves? How do I make sure that whatever happened as a woman or a man in this kind of marriage, I'm protected should anything happen in the future? My advice to, to those kinds of uh, women and men, in fact, but mo usually it's women who find themselves in need of protection, is to ensure that they enter into a marriage contract before they conclude the marriage, the mm -hmm. Muslim marriage and that they think very carefully about what kinds of rights and responsibilities they want included in that contract mm -hmm. to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that um, a number of women find themselves uh, um, on the bad side of, of things when divorce uh, um, 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 creeps up into the marriages. Currently, what kind of recourse is there if something like that happens? Uh, you're talking now about um, Muslim divorces. Yes. If um, can I take it to court? Can I challenge it? You see, it depends. Um, we have we have a, um, a few a few cases that have been adjudicated already mm -hmm. around uh, issues of uh, relating to Muslim marriage and divorce, and um, so we've had one case, for example, that recognizes the Muslim marriage as a contract. Mm -hmm. So if you can prove that you have that you know you have a contract and that. Um, you you would be able to inf if you can prove the terms um, of the contract, then the court would be able to enforce the terms of those con of the contract. Um, 
our courts have also recognized maintenance rights in respect of women. Mm -hmm. So there are certain Islamic law rights that have not been recognized um, or, or, or that haven't come up for adjudication. But if they were to be taken up for adjudication, it is possible that the court could recognize them. Um, but of course, having to go the litigious route every time is very costly. Mm. So yeah, yes, imagine. the option of going to court and asking the court to intervene to recognize an Islamic law right is there. There's no guarantee that it will be recognized. Mm. Um, but just to have to take the step of going to court is an extremely costly process. And this is why um, the need to, to have legislation to recognize and regulate Muslim marriages is so much greater. Most definitely. Now, um, those who find themselves in the polygamous uh, uh, marriages, uh, uh, Professor, um, will the bill, if passed, also protect them? I think so. The bill makes provision for polygynous marriages. And in fact, um, it, it, it introduces regulation that does not currently exist in our Muslim communities. Mm. So the bill proposes that if a husband contemplates taking um, a subsequent wife, that he must apply to court, um, and that the court must then apply the Quranic principles of a uh, principle of equality mm -hmm. between the spouses. Mm -hmm. um, in that event, whichever uh, existing wife the husband has would have to be given notification that he is intending to take a second wife. Mm. Currently, that doesn't happen in the community. So, uh, there are cases where men have been known to take subsequent wives without the first wife even knowing about the existence of the second wife, That's or even the second wife knowing about the existence of the first wife. Mm. Um, so the bill would, would, would help regulate that kind of situation, introduce protections for the women. Um, and the court would have to consider um, the principle of equality between the spouses, and the husband would also have to show the court. He'd have to show, he'd have to have a contract uh, approved by the court to regulate the financial circumstances of the of the second right. marriage. Well, Professor, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Unfortunately, because of the time, we have to cut short. But thank you for coming. Your time is highly appreciated. Thank you. Great stuff. Well, um, that was Professor Amin joining us to talk about uh, about uh, Muslim marriages. Um, stay tuned. We're going to take a break and continue after the break. <laughs>